So let's call this uh, select board meeting to order. Monday, January 11th. Certainly been a boring week in our outside life, hasn't it? Uh, it's uh, six o'clock meeting uh, meeting in Conway through Zoom, and people can access this meeting uh, using our town FCAT media FCAT channel it's called FCAT Media, and you can see all of our Conway select board meetings every week. So our first item is uh, the. The minutes of the last meeting. So did everybody read the minutes? Yeah. Yeah, they were great. I, I had one small change. Louise, this is probably mostly for you. So you said that I, I walked, uh, I looked at the Nexamp property, and then you had a question about actually who I walked it with. And the person I walked it with was Bruton Strange. And so that's, that's not who you had listed. I think you asked if it was Marie Eakin or I can't remember who was in the minutes, but but I walked the property with the uh, chair of the Conservation Commission, Bruton Strange. <coughs> so that was the only problem I had with the minutes. Given that, I'll make a motion that we that we uh, approve the minutes of the last meeting. As amended. As amended, exactly. Second. Uh, second. Okay. So do I hear an aye? Aye. Yes. I say aye. So we'll say that that's, they're approved. Um, so we had one tiny warrant uh, that Tom sent out. It was an adjustment to a, a warrant from a week ago. Um, it was to uh, a that from, warrant. From a month ago. Oh, oh that's Sorry, right. From the a month ago. Wasn't last week, it was from a whole month ago. To raise that warrant. By a hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty one cents, there were two small adjustments, uh, an insurance payment that made it go up and another credit that let it go down. So a change of one hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty one cents. So anybody have an issue with that? So I'll make a motion that we accept uh, that change to the to the payroll deduction warrant from a month ago. Second. Looking for yep. a second. Thank you. Erica yep. seconded it. And so we all say aye. 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 So that's a unanimous. Okay. How about uh, meetings attended by select board members? So Erica, you're always here. You're up to bat first. Yeah. I There, there actually was um, a meeting of the Age Friendlies Communities Project this morning, but I wasn't able to attend. So I have a phone call scheduled with Noor from Life Path later this week Great. to get caught up. How about yours, Phil? The, uh, Tuesday the 5th was the first uh, Frontier Union 38 Budget Committee meeting of the cycle, um, followed by a Frontier Regional School Committee meeting. And then we touched base again Wednesday the 6th for another Budget Committee meeting, which while I'll always be able to answer the question, where were you when the Capitol was stormed by insurgents? I was at a budget meeting. Um, um, but the, uh, um, and, and actually I'm, you know, the, 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 one of the things that's really interesting about the budget thing is the, uh, the, the expenditure of the care monies from the care act from the first stimulus. Um, and the ability to spend that money at the last minute was extended to another year. There was a hard December 31st deadline. And then on December 29th, um, that deadline got pushed for another year. The problem with our, with the school district spending any more of it is that de prior to the deadline, thinking that you either spend it or lose it, Deerfield spent it all. They spent all of theirs. And so did, I believe, Sunderland. Um, and the, the, we have a regional agreement for any type of expenditures for the school. They get a portion based on the student representation. So if there's a dollar in the frontier budget, that usually means 15 or 16 cents to Conway. Um, but so, so we, we have the, the, the problem of both Waitley and Conway has CARES Act money that and the school has eligible items that could, that during this year, um, you really use that money and take that off the budget. However, 
in order to spend it, we would have to go contrary to our regional agreement. Hmm. So um, in other words, we would have to spend more than our fair share as we normally would. But if we don't do that, then we're by, by December 31st, then we're likely just to return a whole bunch of money. So it's, it's an interesting conundrum. And I was asked to raise it with, uh, with, with Tom Hutchinson and I believe other members are raising it to their town administrators because this is sort of a sticky little wicket. Um, can we spend money um, on specific expenses uh, sort of outside of the framework of the regional agreement if it means that if we don't do that, we return the money? And is it, you know, you're, you're saying the amount of money that the town's got was different than our percentage by our school population. Well, yeah, the, the, the two have nothing to do with each other. Right. The, the, so, so, you know, Deerfield gets X hundreds of thousands of dollars, Conway get, got X hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever. All the town's yeah. got money to spend on all these eligible items, number one of which is school COVID-related expenses. Um, and so Deerfield went ahead and spent it all. So so let's say, let's say that there's an item for uh, tent rentals that's a $10,000 item. Conway has, and that Conway and Waitley together have more than $10,000 of CARES money remaining. No, the normal course of thing, Conway and Waitley together would, would, would pay like $3,000 out of that $10,000. But what I'm saying is that we can't do that in this instance um, because all, everything, everything always goes through the, frame, the, the framework of Right. Yeah, per student percentage. So, so is it well, yes. money allocated to the district, the original district? It's, it's, the, it's all the monies are allocated to town. The districts don't don't get anything unless the towns. Okay. So, uh, well, the, the district had a separate a separate bunch of funding as well. That, that's, true. Um, that's true. Okay. I mean, how is that any different from like Conway applying for a grant all on its own and getting a chunk of money and not having any of the schools, other schools in the district involved? Because Conway Elementary is its own school district. So we can do that. So, but Frontier is- so, so, Yeah, a, a couple of points on this. Um, first, Conway Grammar School may have more money may need to spend more money on things. The town might need to spend more money on things, though right. we really haven't sp spent much money on anything other than, a, you know, hand right. sanitizer. Right. Um, and um, it is it is it is absolutely, you know, um, there, there would be there would be zero question about Conway spending what would be Conway's contribution to a frontier expense. There's also um, the possibility that Deerfield and Sunderland could chip in for that expense, uh, perhaps through their reserve fund, um, or have a town meeting that, you know, allocated some more money for CARES expenses, um, so that it doesn't, it, 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 their contribution wouldn't have to come from their CARES money. If it's a frontier expense, their contribution, you know, could come from free cash if town meeting voted it that way. Is, is there some concern that the money that Conway Grammar School hasn't spent is going to be appropriated by the other towns because they've spent all of their CARES money? No. Okay. No. Um, the so the, what the town was, was, was granted $160,000. Uh, we probably have seventy or $80,000 total expenses so far, so maybe half of that, Well, which, which leaves uh, $80,000 roughly on the table. So that, that we're talking about a, a substantial chunk of money here, and um, so Phil, I think, is asking uh, for a for a policy, um, and and I, you know, I I don't see it as I don't see any administrative hindrance. Um, I think it's a policy thing as to, as to whether or not Conway wants to pay, you know, sort of full share or half share for something that Frontier's doing uh, for CARES, but I also don't see why other towns you know, might not um, take some of their stabilization money, 
you know, and 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 pay for it that way. If it's an if it's an unexpected additional expense uh, that wasn't budgeted, so I, you know, yeah, it would. It, I'm sure they would love it if Conway, you know, used its CARES money for that. But um, it might be a little more. Um, I mean, they, they they should also consider that that that's not the only option that's on the table for for contributing to Frontier. Did Deerfield get our permission for them to spend their money? They didn't need it. They don't need it. Well, what if what if we had spent it first? What if we had gone out and spent our eighty thousand? I wish we would have. Well, <laughs> and then would they be obligated to spend six times that? Because no, no, no. no. All, budget all, is six times got- larger. All of us got the, you know, got money when we got money. They they ended up spending a whole lot on their board of health um, that that we didn't do. Uh, but well, and they and they had to they had to put up EMS people who were in quarantine. They had a whole bunch of expenses we didn't have. Right. This is all true. This is all true. But so so, so like you know there. Um, but but you know my whole thing is that I that it doesn't make any sense to return the money when we do have we we will have more than enough qualifying expenses. But when when I talk to when when you talk to the frontier budget, you know Shelley and the the administrative team, they're kind of thinking, oh, Deerfield ran out of money. We can't really spend anybody's Care Act money anymore because we we you know oh the 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 the, the regional agreement and. Um, and so I, I was just trying to, you know, you know what, what I had said. You know, I'm going to talk to Tom, and we, we, you know, we wanted to figure out some kind of framework where we can still make sure that we can spend our CARES money, um, despite what other towns have or have not done. Do we need a policy that the CARES money is independent? I don't. Is that oh, even that, necessary? I mean, it seems like. I mean, I feel like like Deerfield or the Frontier School Committee could. If you know, if they had another expense that they can't cover because they spent their CARES money, and they want to ask us to supplement, um, you know, they can ask us in the moment. But do we need to have a, a an actual policy about what we're going to do with our reserves? Well, it, it would be something on the order of a donation, and it would certainly gain Conway some goodwill. Well, right, but I mean, do we have to have a policy that says, you know, if Waitley or Sunderland or, you know, any one of these other schools in the district, if they've exhausted their funds and they need money, we've decided we're going to do X, Y, or Z. I mean, why couldn't it just be something that happens in the moment if they have an expense that they can't cover? They can ask us, or like you said, Tom, they can go to, um, you know, they can dip into their reserves. I just don't know whether, I don't know whether we need to have a policy about it. Well, it's pretty much just for this one grant um, that we're going to have money left over and they've had expenses that we've been spared. So do we want to, um, you know, spend more than we usually would for the district um, so that the district can get something done that... um, you know, they otherwise wouldn't be able to do or, or the towns would have would have to dig into their reserve funds to fund something like that. Do we now have a whole year to spend that yeah, money? I mean, do we know that we're going to have money left over? And do we know that there's anything specifically that they need to fund right now that they need our reserves for? Phil, do you have anything on the second question there? Uh, do, yeah, are they yeah, anticipating yeah, yeah. specific expenses? So you know, one of the the things that's on that that's on there is um, a much higher than expected uh, uh, Chromebook kind of thing because every kid took them home and they they suffer more damage and abuse at home. So the replacement and injury rate to those things is skyrocketed. So that's de- been deemed a COVID expense. Um, and uh, th- th- you know the, the and then there are additional. Uh, Building modifications that are COVID expenses and things like that that uh, that right now are just sort of standing out there um, and are going to be covered with general revenue. That's the current plan because they, they think that there's no they don't see an option or an alternative to that. So I was trying to come up with alternatives to that. Um, 
I mean, I, I, I have no problem like sharing our reserves with the other towns, but I mean, having like worked for nonprofits, like, I mean, I just, I like, this is my experience that if people know that there's a pot of money available, they're going to come after it. So I feel like if we were to say, you know, like we have X amount of dollars that we haven't spent, you know, come and ask us for it. Like, I just feel like that's inviting. Um, I don't know. I, I would rather evaluate each request on a case by case basis. Well, so I mean, the, the, I, I, when it, when what, the actual request, I'm sure you know you'll you, you'll you'll hear it, and you're like, well, yeah, right. of course, that's right. COVID, <laughs> right. and, and yeah, I mean, that makes sense. The the thing, you know, my whole thing was that if the two options are hand eighty thousand dollars back to the federal government or spend more than spend it, even though that means helping out. Deerfield and Sunderland. Oh, absolutely. Um, the, 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 then, then I would rather spend it. But if there's another alternative, and I, I thought I heard Tom saying maybe, you know, that if you can spend it just for your portion of an, of an, uh, and I don't know if that's an actual option or not. Um, can can, can a, an expense be deemed a COVID expense just for Conway, and um, or or. Uh, or, or something like that. I, I don't. I don't know. But well, I do. So, so what I would like to do is put this on the agenda for next week because we're we're well into deliberating yeah. something that's not yeah. on the agenda, yeah. okay. and and I don't think that there's a, a, a pressing time need to decide this. Right. And maybe yeah. You know, th I think that's a good idea, Tom. And maybe it, between now and then, maybe if you can sort of touch base with Shelley and just share your thoughts on it, um, and. Uh, I don't know, because I told her you would. <laughs> Happy to. All right, thanks. Uh, I had no meetings this week, except we're still expecting a letter from Comcast over our over our franchise negotiation. So it hasn't come yet. People have been on vacation. You know, I haven't forgotten that woman's promise to send her the entire work crew for a work bee one day here. <laughs> I, I hope you're, you're scouring up some volunteers for that. I think those South River people would love that for the picking the tree roots out of the river, though, like they do every year, whatever that project is. Um, when they did their project up at uh, in Greenfield at the YMCA camp, I wrote letters to everybody in Conway saying we should support this so they yeah. know how much Conway supports Comcast. And I was the only person that went. So. Uh. I don't, yeah. they won't, we'll see. Because it's hard for people to think anything good about Comcast. I'm sorry. It is. It yes. is. Any public comments? I don't think we have any public people on here. So no public comments. Uh, so let's put off the joint meeting with the finance committee for another nine minutes at least. Mm -hmm. uh, so the old business, Tom, do you want to talk about the UCC request? We did get a document from the church. Yeah, we got a couple. We got a letter and a set of plans. Um, the letter seemed to me to be a little bit confusing. Uh, I didn't see any compelling reason for the town to do anything based on the letter. Um, uh, I, 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 and at this point, you know, we, we have a letter from town council saying that, you know, unless we have an agreement with the UCC to provide some sort of service in return for money that we give them, um, that um, that's you know it it falls under the Anti Aid Act. Um, so I don't really see any use in kind of um, keeping on, uh, you know, saying saying that that this is going to be a determining factor in how much money we give them. They, they haven't tied it to a certain amount. They haven't said, this is why we need $13,000 from you because, you know, the, the, the town is, has, you know, it, all they have to do is not screw up the road. <laughs> and it's, it seems like it's really easy for them to do that. Yeah, uh, they, they could screw up the road if they wanted to, but it sounds like they're not going to. So that's that's good. It's just going to cost you money. That letter and everything to Ron, and Ron had no issue with it. Well, he 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 doesn't believe that there's any, 
reason the town should subsidize private work next to a road just because it's next to a road. So, I mean, that, I think that's really the key thing. So, you know, to, to, to me, the, the Anti-Aid Act really barely applies because um, they, would, uh, they, they would gladly write, sign in something that says, you know, that any town can always use their meeting room or their conference room. They've always done that for 250 years. They, they, they you know, they, they, um, I, no, I don't, I don't know if they're, I don't know if their new plans can uh, call for a kitchen, um, but it, they always have opened that up to everybody. A, a, and um, if we were to give them money for a road, it would be for the, you know, for the road, or for, for the road stabilization, not so much for the church. So I think that the anti-aid amendment stuff doesn't really, you know, to, to me, you know, they, they sent us a letter from their engineer who's an actual qualified licensed engineer. And, and he said, he, he stated a bunch of facts, but he sort of just stated a conclusion. And his conclusion was that the stabilization of that wall is necessary to stabilize the road. But he, to, to me, the, his letter didn't really include a factual basis for that conclusion. And, and um, you know, I'm, I would really like to write back and just ask, write the engineer back and ask for the factual basis for the, because they have a conclusion, a conclusory statement from an engineer that says it's necessary, but we have a conclusory statement from our highway boss saying it's not necessary. So, um, you know, you, we sort of need to understand, you know, how, how, how a wall 15 feet from the road is necessary to stabilize the road. And well, I, I don't see that the town would be getting a service from the church by giving them money to do something that they have to do that anyway. Is, that they have to do anyway, and it's on their own property. You know, I, I think Eric has said it earlier. You know, somebody else comes along and says, oh, yeah, I'm going to be digging a trench next to the road. Uh, you should give me money so that I don't hurt your road. It, it, it sounds a little, you know, we're, we're not really getting anything. They're, they are not providing a service to the town for that money. And regardless of what they might provide, it's hard to come up with a figure of $13,000 for what it's worth for us to use their property in the future. The, the difference, though, Tom, is that instead of a person digging a trench, this was a group of people that involuntarily had a tornado come through and wreck their building. Um, and, so, um, and, and they have insurance. They have insurance. Like, I feel like if my house burned down and I had to rebuild it, I would not be in a good position to, you know, ask the town to help pay for, you know, pouring my foundation because I was so close to a public road. I. I just I'm I'm uncomfortable with the precedent that it sets if this was something I mean to, to, to me based on the information that has been supplied there has been no uh th there has been no uh uh the case has not been made that the town ought to contribute right, right. but that um you know you, and, and they're welcome to make their case I feel yeah, like a, they ask, them to, ask them to have their engineer communicate why it is the town that should be paying for half that wall the, 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 that restraining wall. It's 15 feet from the road. Mm -hmm. and, um, but, well, well, the old foundation wall is 15 feet from the road. And correct. on their plans, they said they're going to put some fill behind it. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. They would stabilize it, whatever that means. Um, not $14,000 worth. All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I'm I, 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 I I, I'll just give them the assumption of good faith that they didn't pull that, that right. number out of the air and that the, the engineer actually quoted that number to them. But I agree. I mean, based upon the assessment of our town highway boss, I would like to see more evidence that this is something that is actually. Um, a so, town Tom, you could write that letter. Um, that, that we got their letter. We appreciate it. We don't see Still not convinced. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. And they can continue telling us what, why. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, is everyone, uh, Alan, do you guys have a quorum? Who's here? Good evening. Well, we have Steve here. I'm here. I don't know about Roy. Yeah. Huh? About Rihanna. I think Tom Donovan's supposed to call in. I see uh, 9251. Yeah, that's uh, 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 Chief Baker. Robert. Oh, hi, Robert. Hi. Well, why don't we go on for another couple minutes? Uh, bear with us, Ken. You, Robert, you got a minute here? Sure. Do we have any new business? Uh, oddly enough, no. Um, once we get into these weekly meetings, sometimes we don't. Yeah, and any items not anticipated? Uh, yes. Um, we need to choose a delegate to go to the uh, to be Conway's representative at the Mass Municipal Association annual general meeting. In the past, the chair has filled that function. I know, Mr. Chair. I'm willing to do, do that. <laughs> I don't know if you guys signed up that you were going to go. It's going to be by Zoom. I don't know what kind yeah. of meeting it's going to be this year. Emails about it, but yeah. Okay. You stuck you, with me, Tom. Erica, you might find it of value, actually. I can say, yeah. I mean, I've I've been invited, so <laughs> you're invited. <laughs> I yeah. can go if I'm, even if I'm not officially representing the town. Oh, that's much more fun. <laughs> what do you think, Alan? You want me to go? Is that what you're asking me, Tom? Well, do you have a quorum? Not yet. I have a quorum. I don't think the answer is no, not yet. So it is 6.30. So... Tom, can we do your uh, your uh, administrator update quickly? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. Nope. Hi, Gemma. And there's Roy. Roy, so now you have a quorum. Okay. So let's do some... Uh, Finance committee, uh, let, let's talk about uh, the budget. So who's up first? Ken, you up first? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you've all got a copy of the budget, presumably. Yeah. Bob, can you put the budget on the screen like you did last week? Well, that would be you, Tom. Can you do it? Tom, um, can you put the budget on the screen, please? Public safety. Police department, there it is. Okay. Yeah, you can see there's just a couple of increases. The radio fees, the FERCOG hasn't officially made a determination yet, so they said to figure two and a half percent increase. So that's what we went with on that. It may be that, it may be less. Maybe none at all. We don't know what the fur car is going to do yet. Just uh, curious, Ken, how, how many employees does this represent in your department? Right now, there's six. And, and um, some are salary and some are hourly? I am the that... only salary. The others are all hourly. Okay. And you can see the um, training. It was up one hundred dollars, and the only excuse me, the only other increase uh, we have vehicle maintenance. We put it up to uh, twenty five hundred because we've almost exhausted it this year, and we're still got six months to go, five months to go. So we bumped it up five hundred dollars. I'll just say I'll just say that uh, as every year, your budget is a thing of beauty. <laughs> just uh, there's this, nothing there. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just yeah, that's just um, 
It's lovely. I have no, I have no, no, no questions. It's just perfect. <laughs> Alan, do we take approval, um, have an approval of this budget or not? We, we don't make an official vote till uh, we're done pretty much, yeah. uh, Steve, it by, by the end of March. Then we get into discussing things. And actually, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons the vehicle maintenance has gone up is because the we have a mobile data terminal in the vehicle, and that was being absorbed through the IT department's budget, and it's about forty dollars a month, and um, that we are now taking on that fee. So that's the biggest part of the increase in the vehicle. That's the whole thing, yeah. And your, the main police cruiser is now a three years old. It's going to be entering three years of age, right? We got it, what, th two years ago? Yeah. All right. So it's good for another few years at least. Let us pray. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. How many police vehicles are there? That's the one and only. That's the one and only. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I thought. When we talk with other towns, they can't believe we have one one municipal vehicle. Uh, we 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 like to play well together in the sandbox, so all the officers get along. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the, the, the when I was at the last FERCOG meeting, can they they were talking about uh, body cameras for for local departments and they they were pitching it as uh, 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 officer safety and also uh, uh, town liability purposes. And, th and they were saying that the cost of it has gone down so much that they're, and they're, and they're getting grant funding for some of it too. I don't know, but they, right. they said that for, for small departments, it would be just a few thousand dollars is what they said. Yeah. My biggest concern with the cameras, I'm all in favor of them, 100% in favor of cameras. I have been for years. What I'd like to see is what now the cost of the data storage is. Mm. The, the cost of the cameras, I don't think is a, is a deal breaker. I think it's what the cost of storing the data afterwards. Interesting. Are there rules about how long you'd have to store it? Well, we'd have to check with uh, the yeah. state. Any other issues? No. Sounds great. Maybe uh, Gemma could go next. Uh, one, one last. Hey, Tom, just sure. just let yeah. me know that I did register for that class with MIA for Thursday. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chief. That's all I got. All right. Thanks. So Gemma, you still here? Yep. Can you guys hear me? And there you are. Yeah. Hey Gemma. Hey Phil. Um, so we didn't. I didn't do a whole lot with the budget. Um, the biggest changes were. Which uh, budget taking... is this, Tom? Are you putting it up? Tom, could you ambulance. put up Gemma's budget? Ambulance. Yeah. Ambulance budget. Yeah. Um. Oh. Hold on a minute. This is the one I had questions on. Um, I, I'm, I'm new. To, I'm new to the screen sharing stuff. I thought it was up. Sorry. <laughs> um, the biggest change was just to to we lowered the the hourly salary or the employee payment bit a little bit um, in regard in in the ability to bring up. Uh, the assistant director's salary um, and not really change the overall, you know, the bottom line. Um, other than that, I think we should be all right to kind of keep everything on an even keel from where it was last year. Um, I don't anticipate any major changes. Um, Ken did mention something with the radio, so I'm not sure um, with that, I hadn't heard that that was a possibility. Um, 
but I think if it, if that, you know, if something happens, we can, we can wiggle, you know, line items around and we'll be all right to keep the bottom line um, roughly where, where it's been. So are, are uh, telephone and cell charges, does that, is someone else paying for that or what does that reflect? Um, the phone has been getting done under, I believe under the fire department. Okay. Um, and I, I probably should double check with Bob if he wants to, um, you know, do As something. General, I can speak on that if you'd like. What's uh, that, Bob? Once I, I can speak a little bit on that if you'd like. I, okay. Uh, this, this past year, I signed up for FirstNet. Uh, for a phone service through the, my cell phone. Yep. And that drastically lowered the bill way down and it lowered yours by a couple of dollars too. So what I did this current fiscal year we're in right now, I just absorbed your phone bill and mine together and I'm just paying it. It's only $56 a month. So, okay. Uh, together. So that's why you haven't seen a bill. I just, I'm just paying it on my budget. Okay. Thank you. Because last, last year, both phones, I was paying a hundred and thirty dollars a month, and once wow. I went to FirstNet, it went down to fifty-six. That's a heck of a wow. big savings. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice, nice. I guess just uh, one, one, one more note on the uh, on this on the salaries, and that is. Um, uh, you know, I I I I, I try to uh, make sure people are getting what they need, and um, it's um, it's it's amazing what the uh, what the volunteers, uh, the on-call people do for the town, and um, and even even the department heads, uh, you know, are are working way beyond uh, what their stipends are. Um, are actually paying for. And I think that it's best if the town has a policy of paying what the work is actually worth. Uh, because if, if we happen to lose a department head, we're going to have to fill that position. And it'll make it a lot easier if, if, the, if it's paying, you know, something that somebody would actually work for. Um, we, we've, had, we've had volunteers who've been putting in essentially a lot of unpaid hours. And um, so increasing the assistant director uh, to this level is, is one step out of two I hope we can take. Uh, and, and, you know, Phil is a big uh, fan of not doing everything in one year. Uh, so this, this represents, I think, half of what we eventually should, should raise. We brought it up $3,000, and it could stand to go up some more, as could the ambulance directors. Uh, which is up some, but needs, uh, but also needs um, needs another bump before it's really fair based on the hours worked. Has the personnel committee weighed in at all on this, Tom? No, they they were not dealing with compensation. That was an item that came before the select board and uh, was declined. Uh, a few years ago, it may be it may be time for another uh, another round of considering a compensation policy. Yeah. Yep, thank you. The other thought would be uh, training. I mean, Gemma, you you're flatlining it, but in the years past, you've gone more. I mean, you think that you're pretty confident that training will stay stay level. If you can't pay people, you can give them good training. I mean, that always helps with morale. <laughs> yeah, I think at this point. Um, because most of the training or pretty much all like classes and everything are online, um, there's not nearly as high a fees um, for any of like the con ed credits or anything like that. Um, and we also have more in the, the license and exams, which can also, I kind of, I use those two a little bit interchangeably um, because the, the, any training, if we go over what's in the training line, we can take it out of the exam and the licensing because it's required for um, licensing. 
So I think, and right, you know, we don't have, um, we don't have a lot of EMTs right now. So there's yeah. not a lot that we're, we're having to pay on the training line. Um, I'm hoping lately, that we changes. Been anywhere near it. No, we haven't. There's yeah. been, there's been a, a lot of, um, like I said, the, I think across the board, the, the fees for classes and stuff have been very low. Yeah. Um, and a lot of, um, one of the EMPs, he often pays for all of his, his, uh-huh. you know, training and doesn't ask for reimbursement. Um, and I, you know, I've asked multiple times for his, his receipts to, to do that. And a lot of times he, he declines. He says he doesn't really need it and he doesn't, um, you know, he's happy to do it um, without getting reimbursed. So it's, um, I'm hoping that we'll get more EMTs and then, and that, that line will come back up and we'll be paying more for trainings, um, which is mostly why I haven't lowered it because I don't want to risk not having it if we need it. Gemma, the number that looks unusual is the 11,000 last year for the hourly employee budget. Was there a reason that that got bumped up last year? That that was when we were. Let me try to remember. Sorry, my brain is a little cloudy it's right okay. now. Okay. Um. You could say we anticipated COVID. How about that? <laughs> well, <laughs> COVID can go suck an egg, as far as I'm concerned. But uh huh. Yeah. Um. I, I believe that was when we were talking about the when it came to light that train if requ- if trainings were required then they would need to be paid. Um, I know like with the fire department we started uh-huh. getting paid for trainings, um, and we haven't I haven't figured out a the right way to go about doing the payment of trainings. Um, with Jan as far as how we need, whether we just do a flat amount or we do it per training. Um, And that was why that number, we pushed it up in anticipation of that and that hasn't been established. Um, And we were also hoping that we were gonna get more EMTs because we had a few people in the the wings that didn't pan out. so that was that's why that number got brought up, mm-hmm. um, and and also why I feel I can take from that line and add it to Chris's assistant director salary, yeah, um, to bring him to a little bit more of a fair, a fair number for the amount of work that he's put in. It all looks great, Gemma. This is Steve. Has there been any impact on COVID, or from COVID? <laughs> on your budget at all? No, I don't, I don't really think so. Um, you yeah, know, if, cases. Um, as far as ambulance employees? Yes, as far, well, ambulance um, employees are transporting <laughs> ambu- uh, COVID people. We have not transported any known COVID patients. Um, we have one current EMT with COVID. Um, currently speaking hence why my brain is a little foggy um you have it yes i do did something you got in your line of work or no no it actually um one of my family members got it in her line of work and uh so luckily it it did not impact the ambulance we were able to to quarantine fairly quickly and and keep it you know, contained, um, you know, to our, to our area, which is good. Um, Have the number of calls gone down due to COVID, which I could easily imagine. They certainly, they certainly did initially. Um, and I would say overall they have remained low. Um, and a, a lot of people have said, you know, they, they waited to call or something because they, they had concerns and didn't want to risk being exposed to anything more, um, 
So it, it has definitely impacted our call volume. There'd be fewer motorcycles, you know, coming up the S curves and driving through Conway. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, you know, the, the traffic in general has been has been much much lower. Gemma, you yes. did. You, Gemma, you do a great job with this budget with the department. I, you're you're worth your weight in gold. Um, thanks a lot. Thanks, Phil. Mm -hmm. Good luck, Gemma. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, by how many more positions would you like to increase? Ideally, how many how many more people are you looking for? You feel that you're near full staff. Ideally, I mean, I I would. Right now, we have. Uh, officially five EMTs on the roster. Um, one of who hasn't actually started going on calls and because of COVID um, mm -hmm. he's got family members that he needs to be concerned with. So he's, he's got his training and he's, he's ready to start um, once the vaccine is more widespread. Um, but ultimately I, I would like, you know, 10 to 12. Um, mm -hmm. And I know it's, it's a pipe dream, but that would I would spread it out enough over, you know, more people. So it's not, you know, me and Chris going on almost every call. Mm. Um, so ultimately, you know, and I, we've got a few people that have, have inquired and, and uh, there's one of the, the first responders from the fire department. That's uh, I think she signed up for the class in the spring. Um, so I'm, um, I'm as, as optimistic as I can be at this point. And uh, like, I mean, yeah, but you know, 10 to 12 would be, be nice. But at this point I take a couple more that start going on calls regularly. And uh, you know, once we get people used to it and figure out what they're doing and they can run calls by themselves, that'll be, that'll be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for good work. Jim. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? No. And thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Gemma. Feel better. Thanks very much, Gemma. Thank you. Thanks, Gemma. Yeah. Have a good night, guys. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Robert. Hi. How are you? Robert, how are you? <laughs> We're all good. Next, next slide, Tom. <laughs> That's up, right? Nope. It's the last bud budget. It's ambulance. It's right? no ambulance, yeah. There it is. Dang. Okay. There's always one more step. <laughs> so, Robert, your budget didn't change much. Well, uh, the budget you have in front of you, is, is that the one that says $76,478? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's the exact budget that I presented at the beginning of last year. For uh, increase from last year, then we were asked because of budget constraints to, to chop it some, and I took it down thirty eight hundred dollars to get it end up at seventy two thousand six eighty seventy eight. So what I'm doing this year is just simply asking for the same amount of money. It doesn't look like that, but I'm asking for the same amount of money that I proposed last year before we made the cuts. So we understand what, we're, what I'm talking about. Well, you cut a lot out of vehicle maintenance. I did, yes, and I think that's coming back to haunt us some. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be over budgeted, uh, but we have some trucks that are getting up in years, and there's always three of the three of the four trucks that are getting up in years, and they're always seeming to start nickel and diamond a little bit here and there. So. Uh, I, I try I put the budget uh, uh, the the maintenance on the vehicles up to um, 
Let's see, what do I got? I got two of them trash in front of me. Yeah. Up to the 7500 And then last year we lowered, they lowered, I lowered it $2,500 to 5000 So uh, I'm back asking 7500 for it, which is not a lot of maintenance to maintain five vehicles. We have four fire trucks and one cruiser that we have to squad that we have to maintain. And uh, like I said, the newest vehicle is, uh, let's see, that's a 16. The newest vehicle is four years old now. We're going on five, and the other ones are considerably more. Um, none of them, the other ones need to be replaced at this time, but they are aging quicker than we'd like to see them. But uh, I hope, hopefully that $7,500 will be able to maintain that for another Please. year. You spent more than that uh, for you know for a couple of years. Yes, I did. Right. Well, this you know our main we we, we can't when you build your budget you can't put an exact figure on maintenance because unless you know something that precisely you you've got to have planned. But with the fire service and the fire trucks, when something breaks, you got to get them fixed. <laughs> yeah, and you got to get them fixed immediately. You know, there's nothing worse than having a major fire and having a fire truck sitting in the garage because you can't use it because something's wrong with it. So it's, it's, I've always been told for the 40 years, 41 years that I've been fire chief in this town, the select board has always said, we'll give you an average amount of money. And if you, that's one item that we'll have to draw more money into the budget later in the year if we have to. A lot of years we could coast by with the money. Some years we roll a little bit. And that's the way that's the way the ball falls with them. So <clears throat> basically, I'm asking, like I said, and if anybody's got any other questions, I, I'm asking the same amount of money they started with last year. And and I'll I'll uh, I'll break in here again and say, uh, yes, um, that is because Chief Baker is very responsible. Um, I, however, your spendthrift town administrator. Um, would like to propose an extra $1,242 in his hourly salary as the first installment of two $1,200 raises to get him where he ought to be. This is all the result of things that got done um, a couple of years ago that we were not able to implement in, uh, in last year's budget. Uh, so again, based on the amount of hours that he works, um, uh, I'm going to propose an extra $1,242 in his salary line as, as the first of two two intended raises. So that's not in here now? No. No, it's not, no. It's not in there. The reason Chris's was in was because that was a joint recommendation of Gemma and me. Uh -huh. But, I, you know, um, I, I, I very much appreciate that department heads are not um, – uh, not out asking for a lot of money for themselves, but um, I'm going to ask for at least a little more for uh, for the chief this year. Here, and again, it's just twelve hundred forty-two dollars, so not breaking the bank here. I ask what the difference is between equipment and turnout gear. Okay, equipment is uh, turnout gear is strictly clothing options for like uh, there. Helmets, boots, gloves, jackets, raincoats, uh, goggles, uh, brush gear, all any physical clothing gear that they're required to wear when they go into a, 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 any type of fire. And that's it looks like that's a purchase that you don't make very, I mean, every couple of years, really. No, I, I, I upgrade as it's needed. So okay. we're not, we don't land with a giant bill one year. Uh, because you're looking at, you know, if you have uh, a full firefighter geared up the way they're supposed to be, you're looking at down close to $5,000 mm -hmm. in turnout gear, just on one, one employee. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dollar amount that we put in, and we slowly, if somebody rips a pair of pants or something like that or gets a pair of pants worn out, we have the money there to replace them with. Uh, and we try not to try to stay, keep the gear uh, up above uh, the national standards, uh, we're, sometimes we're lacking a little bit because the national standard says you should be replacing the turnout gear every five to eight years, and we go 10, 10 to 12 years on an average because 
the reason I feel that we can do that is because we don't have as many calls as the national mm-hmm. average compares to. They, they compare their averages for a full planning department. But we're not full time. We don't have anywhere near as many calls, so we can get that extra longevity of life. Uh, and we do keep very close track. We, we, at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, we'll inspect the turnout gear of everybody to make sure it's up to stuff the way that we feel it should be and, and meet the OSHA standards. So uh, that's why we left that figured that way with the uh, turnout gear. So, but you didn't have any bucket in, in FY20 or FY21 for turnout gear. Say that again, please. It looks like you didn't have any budgeted or expended in FY20. Well, yeah, or FY20. Um, well, it was expended in FY21, but it was lumped in. On, it was lumped in with equipment. You'll see the difference is about the same. Okay. At that point, we we decided to split it out here to make it clearer. What 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 about happens that, here is has that flexibility, my, right? Yeah, with my yeah, it's, a, little, it's a, a bottom little, line. A little bit upsetting with me is when the town accountant takes articles and he combines them together and doesn't really tell you till you find out later, and that upsets me a little bit because I put this budget together on these line items so that I could track every one the way I'd like to make sure they're not going to be running away or anything like that. And then, like you said, it takes the equipment and the training and the turnout gear and it lumps them all in one sum. So, you know, I've asked him several times and he said, I, I need to get back to him because he's hard to get to because he's not in his office. I'm not in mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I hope that Come July first is next year. We can go back to this line item budget like I got. No, thank it's you. Not just the one, one spot that he did that to it. So, yeah, no, um, that's very helpful. Thank you. Hey, uh, Bob, I have a question. That is uh, vehicle maintenance. Have you any idea of what's been expended year to date? I do not have it with me. No, I would say it's probably. It's probably pushing between four and five thousand dollars. Something that so area. in other words, you're uh, you're you're somewhat on budget. Yes, I would say it's pretty close to average. Mm. That's my thought. Is maybe for vehicle maintenance, given that your fleet is a year older, maybe maybe we're a little underestimating. A flatlining. Um, well, yeah, you know, that's what we're doing. We're kind of flatlining it. You know, like I said, we we. You can shoot the higher figure on it if you want, but it 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 doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and do more maintenance because we don't shortchange on maintenance. If, it, if some vehicle needs something maintained or, or fixed, it gets fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, you see, a couple of years ago we went over uh, uh, what was that in eighteen? I guess it was. Yeah, we yeah. went over. We went over some because. We had one truck that was, uh, we went in, in for repairs and ended up costing us a fortune on the damn thing, more than we anticipated. But when they got it in, they found more problems than it actually had, than we thought it had. So mm-hmm. that was the cost. Why that run up like that? But, um, no, believe it or not, our trucks are very well maintained compared to a lot of towns. Um, and uh, I have since had a uh, <clears throat> guy that comes down from, uh, I think he's from... Goshen, he works in a lot of departments, trucks in the area, like mm-hmm. South River, not South River, Whaley, uh, Ashfield. He does uh, Highland Ambulance Service work, and he comes right to the door and does the guy's a, does a great job, and he's very reasonable, and it's worked out fantastic for us for maintenance in the last mm-hmm. couple of years. Thank you. I have you a follow-up question. Oh, go, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. You're on. Go ahead. Oh. I have a question. The uh, the uh, fire, uh, the oxygen kits, are, are we done purchasing that or we still have more? The what What kits? The oxygen packs. Oh, the, the, the uh, Scott packs. No, we're up full now. Uh, oh, no more? Last year uh, was, the second, was the second half, and we have, uh, let's see, we have six, uh, for 10, 10, 10 or 12 sets of brands. It's all brand new now. Up to so stuff, we're good. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah, what about the Lucas? 
What about the Lucas chest compressor? Do we have, I thought we're, we have one that, now. Are we going to go for another or is that holding off? That is the ambulance. That's the ambulance, not fire department. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Bob, I've, I've got a question. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, do we, uh, do we have a count? I mean, how, is there any kind of trend we're seeing? Are we flat in terms of number of calls up, down? Do you know? Well, uh, this, this past year we were dead on the, the average. Our oh. average is 76. And I think we ended up with just a little over 70, I think was total. So, but it's, it, it, we were down for a lot of the year. And then this past summer, we came up quite a bit from July to, to August with the river calls and stuff like that, other people lost and things like that. And uh, and then since this fall hit, we've had hardly nothing. I think we've had two calls since this fall. So, hmm. you know, it's, it's like a wave. It's, it's up and down, and you never know where it's going to end up. But it seems to be rolling yeah. in a year's average. average so. Do we ever think about, or uh, is there something hidden in here that we have for like uh, education or prevention? I mean, I know most people think it's, you know, common sense, okay. but, um, the, it, you the know, line it's really training. not. You I see mean, the line in where it says training? Yeah. That's, that's yes. training for the gram. That's training at our grammar school for the grammar school kids. That's fire prevention training for the grammar school children. Okay. okay. Well, I, uh, think, I guess I was thinking, you know, broader than that. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe... The uh, other training we do, and we have a very vigorous training uh, schedule. We have we train twice a month uh, for three hours of time. <laughs> and we have state fire academy classes come in when, when we can get them. Uh, we train with other towns. Uh, for the last no, month, no, Bob. The, the, this the, this is all great. That's that's great. Uh, I'm talking about uh, outreach to train the residents as to you know, or, or maybe even <laughs> um, some kind of um, uh, do I dare say an inspection program where, or like you get an energy audit. You know, maybe uh, maybe there's we could give some thought about a you know a fire audit since they're. I mean, the fires. You know, they. Let's face it. For half the town, the fires will be devastating if 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 there is one. Um, you know, so I I just wonder if there's any you're, have ever been any thought or we've ever for adults. Yeah, you know, like uh, yeah, I guess that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um. Well, we could try something. I think it's going to be pretty difficult right now with COVID, but um, you know, well, you know, right. Bond. Um, well, maybe there's maybe maybe there's funding from I the have, state. Who who knows? I have thought of starting a. Uh, I haven't got it off the ground yet, but I've been thinking of doing some uh, fire training with the seniors. Uh, yeah, sounds uh, like sounds like a great they, idea. And, and the <laughs> only other thing with the seniors is, I don't know, the place I could see that we could do it is at the senior group when they meet. But there's only like there's only like twenty some out of them to show up for their meeting, so. I mean, I suppose that's 20 is better than none to start with, but. Uh, um, well, you know, still there are there, things uh, that. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, people. A our, there's a lot of seniors in our community, and I'm one of them. It doesn't go to their meetings because I don't think I'm old enough. And that's a, that's a <laughs> lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, it was just a thought, you know, and, and maybe, uh, maybe uh, Tom has seen something about this, uh, you know, in the, from the Commonwealth, you know, it, to me, it's as important as anything, you know, fires here are a disaster. We don't have fire plugs, you know, I mean, it's, right, it's, right. Uh, it would be, it would be who, that's why I asked the number. I mean, because even if there, if there was a way to die, if we could reduce the number of fires with training inspections, you know, remediating some, you know, obvious uh, issues in residents' homes, um, you know, to me, that would be money well spent or diverted or what. I wouldn't want to see anything I, diverted. I would want to see. Boy, I don't. I don't, uh, I don't want to blow Conway's horn at all because I, I think that if you took an average in Franklin County, that the number of fire calls that Conway have is a lot less than most towns. Yeah. 
And I'm, I'm well, thinking you're compared, you're compared to your towns the same size like Charlemont, Asheville, and stuff like that. I think Asheville gives up around 120 calls a year. Uh, I don't know what Charlemont's probably a lot more than that because because the, there's summer, summer uh, recreational area stuff. But um, I think Conway's very, very fortunate to get away with the few calls that we have. Well, let's hope let's let's hope the trend stays. <laughs> For sure. I agree. Thank you. To, thank you, Bob. All right. Thank you. Bob, Bob, Bob this is Philip. I guess I, I just, when I was looking at your budget, I was just thinking, you know, did you, is this sort of a pandemic budget still, or is this the budget you would have submitted in, 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 uh, in, in it, you know, just in the due course this of time? Is, right. This was the budget. It was, it was going to be submitted just before the All COVID right. started. All right. Uh, so, the so, only so, thing that I, that I haven't, uh, asked for or done anything about and I probably should discuss with you people is I'm hoping that sometime in the next year the highway department will be moving out of the building we're in and then we can take over the whole building but in the process of doing that there's some work in there that's got to be done the firemen have already talked about that we can do ourselves like taking down wall petitions that aren't structural or nothing like that and things but there is a couple items in here that really need to be addressed, and one of them would be the heating system. Uh, I talked to Kenny Matt a couple of years ago about, we talked about going to a, uh, a closed-loop uh, propane-powered wall unit instead of an oil furnace uh, to try to save the town a lot of money, and, uh, and that the furnace is in here is getting old. Um, but I don't know if you have anything, Tom, if you have anything lined up anywhere in your budgets for building maintenance that we could look at something like that this next year. Well, that, that would be a capital item uh, that should go to the capital improvements planning committee. Um, that, 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 that ship has sailed in one sense. Um, but y yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, look, looking at, at what an actual price is would help. Uh, you know, there is some money for uh, renovation of that building uh, that could go towards it as well. So, um, it's, you know, it could be possible. Uh, I'll look at, I'll talk to our resident plumber, the police, fire chief, the police chief, and because uh, uh, he put a figure on that a couple of years ago, and I don't remember now what it was. Uh, and perhaps he could look at that again and give us an idea what that would run. It, Tom, Tom, if you're thinking about doing the, the heating system switch over, wouldn't we be able to save on the oil account? And, and don't we want to make sure that we don't get oil for next winter? No, it's not going to happen this winter. Uh, I don't know. Doesn't, but yeah, not, no, yeah, it's not going to happen this winter, but next winter. Right. I mean, there's always that purchase for the before the winter of several thousand gallons or whatever they purchase. I don't know how big the tank is, but. Well, it's now, a lot see, less than it used to be because it's a lot more propane that we're using now. Uh, now, see, we have the, the town garage is using heating oil now and the heating oil that uh, the heating costs that you pay for at the fireman's relief hall. But that's our training center is oil, too. So, uh, I don't think you can say you can just drop drop both of them unless we change both things. So. Bob, I just have a basic question about the labor line in here. Okay. Uh, sure. Looks like 17, 18, 19, you were at 11,000, then it jumped up to 21, yep. and then now yep. you're at 27. What's right? Is but this the volunteer was, fire department? Is this labor for volunteers? We we decided in in 2020 that uh, Tom uh, found out through the state that we we're supposed to be paying them all for training, and we weren't paying them nothing for training before. So in fiscal year 20, we started paying them, and and I, I got them the green your, your board, the finance committee, and everybody in the town to agree to do it half one year and half the next year. So they went up to 21, and then in fiscal year uh, 21, 
it went up to uh, 27. So, and that's the thing um, for the full training. So how many people does this involve? We have, uh, we have 28 firefighters and we have eight juniors. Okay, and those are that's what the labor line is all about, is paying them while that's they're in training. That's okay. Right. That's, all right. That's not, just, that's not just training, though. That's for them going out on fire calls, too. Do you pay them when they go out on calls now? Yes, we always have. Okay. They get the... Uh, so just in, 20, in, in 2020, that's when you started picking up the training cost as... as right. uh, as the state required. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Yep. Thank you for the explanation. Appreciate it. Right. This was a classic, un, classic unfunded mandate from the state. They do that to us every year in ways large and small. Well, the the key here is that it, it it's mandatory for being uh, part of the department. Is is you have to, uh, you have to have regular training. So because we're requiring it, then we have to pay for it. Steve, I think one year you brought your electric car down to Conway Center. That was 19, I think. August. Yeah. yeah. So that was an yeah. example of a training night. Yes. And Conway did that jointly with Ashfield. Yes. Mm. I think this is this is also a very good budget. Thanks, yeah. Bob. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Bob. I have no more questions. Thank you. No more questions? No, thank you for your work, Bob. Okay. Thank you. I'll yeah. say good night then. Okay. Good night. Everybody have a good evening. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. you too. So Alan, then you're good. Oop, where'd it go? I'm good. I don't know what happened, but I'm good. Can you hear me? We can. All right. Well, I don't know what happened there, but I, I'm good. I'm, I think that, that's sign off time for everyone okay. on the finance committee. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Alan. Tom, I have a question. Good night, Next everybody. Monday, are we meeting? Next Monday, are we uh, off? What, what's the plan? Tuesday. Uh, no. Yeah. All, um, all of the following Mondays are taken. Um, I did send out the list i'll send it out again all right so we're meeting next monday correct next tuesday is that right two or tuesday, tuesday. i think it's tuesday right because of yeah the yeah day, right yeah so we're Good all point. meeting tuesday evening next week. thank you thank you for two six thirty or tuesday it is okay good night yeah. folks. good night everyone thank, thank you. you good night everyone thank you bye see you so tom did we do the update did we finish the update um, no, and and uh, I I don't have much. Um, mo most of what I've been doing is dealing with this uh, 69 Main Street tangle. Um, but I will note that um, for the uh, for the state, um, the tax collections are actually up from last year. Um, it's uh, it's kind of extraordinary. Um, there, uh, it, it's, um, nobody knows why I think, but, uh, state tax collections are actually up over last year. Uh, and, and the prospects for, for next year continue to look good. It's, it's amazing. Um, uh, I was on the phone with Ron, uh, with, uh, mass DOT, uh, as you know, we did not get the Mass Works grant we applied for. We did um, find out more about that. Uh, Mass Works got about 100 applications. 38 of them were for STRAP grants, which is Small Town Rural Assistance Program. Now it's pretty much a, a road assistance program. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, there were $18 million in requests, uh, out of which seven were funded for a total of $7 million in grants. Um, 
There were many strengths that our application had. We had a local match. We had local support through letters. We demonstrated financial need. We had a, we clearly described a roadway in disrepair. Um, but we need more narrative on how that disrepair affects health and safety and hard numbers on traffic counts and other things. So there's a little bit more work to do before we're going to be competitive with the uh, towns who are saying that they're uh, – they're having lots of accidents and need police details and need to reroute their uh, public safety vehicles because of the road. Uh, clearly, it's not quite in that bad shape. We're talking about Shelburne Falls Road here. Um, so I gather that um, it's a good thing that the town is not in as bad shape as these other towns. Uh, but uh, we're going to have to show some some more compelling numbers to get that funded. Um, who was that kind of road work before? I mean, it seems pretty I'm, unusual. I'm sorry. Have we have we filled out grants for road work in the past? Uh, we have filled them out, but they have not been funded. Some, yeah. We this is the third, at least the third year we've submitted this one, so we keep getting them a little bit better. So, uh, Who's who's might doing as well these? try. Can, can I ask who's doing these? Because when 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 I hear things like oh the narrative wasn't quite sufficient and things like um, the the uh, the the road count like were, were those in the conditions for, for were those mentioned in the conditions for awarding the grant or did they just pull those out of thin air or I mean the they, they were they were mentioning them as quantitative demonstrations of the things that we did have in our narrative. So our narrative was good. It clearly demonstrated a need. But what we didn't do was back it up with hard numbers. So they gave us examples from other towns. And and uh, that's why we had this call with them uh, to find out, you know, what we can do better next time. So that's how that worked out. Do we have the ability to do mechanically like a, a, a vehicle count on a road? Uh, the FERCOG does that for us. So can, can we set that up so that that's like an annual thing for whatever road we're to contemplating applying for or whatever? Do yeah, yeah. Um, they send out a request usually um, in the spring, I think, for the for the coming year. And I forward that to Ron and Ken. And uh, often we have some done. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have different ones done depending on, on what we need to do. But, yeah, we have in the past done that in order to help demonstrate the need for various things. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about Shel the last time we had Shelburne Falls Road done. But, yeah, we're aware. Um, in other news, uh, I have been working on the uh, CARES reconciliation round. Um, this is for expenses that happened before December 31st. As you know, the deadline for spending was extended, but we still have to uh, submit costs that were uh, incurred by December 30th for, uh, for um, just as part of the regular updating that we do. So that's another thing that's still ongoing, uh, as is our work with the um, uh, with the carbon credit grant, our work with Williamstown. Um, it looks as though we're farther along than they are and need a different set of tasks completed uh, than than they're currently working on for their for their RFP. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how best to address that. Of course, we have a time limit on our grant and and we'll need to get that work done by the end of the fiscal year as well. Uh, I got a call from Mary Wigmore today who's interested in further work along uh, these lines. Um, and I spoke to her and, and hope to get some good ideas uh, for her to what include what to include in an RFP like that, though she can't really give me formal advice because she hopes to... Um, she can't write the RFP because she wants to, um, <laughs> you know, submit a proposal. Um, 
And, uh, and I also got an email today from the American Forest Federation looking to establish communication around resident education on carbon credits and, and related work. So that, that's a good one. Um, and, and Phil, I don't know if you want to, if, if you want to be in on that, I'd be happy to forward their email to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I thought that the, the letter you sent to that Andrew Gropp was wonderful. I thought, um, his response was great. I also spoke with Mary today. Um, I guess that was before she spoke, she spoke with you. She, um, cause I, I reached out to her just for more information about getting funding for individual landowners for the, for, for the necessary forestry study. Um, and she uh, is forwarding information from both state, uh, state government, federal government, and private organizations that all fund that. Um, she, she seems to think that getting funding for that is not really even an obstacle, that there's, that that's one of the few things that's easy to get funding for right now. So I um, thought that was pretty good. Yes, and, and I do expect that um, coverage of those sorts of options will be part of whatever the consultant we hire provides to us. Right. Uh, right. You know, um, aside from any, you know, things that she knows of offhand that they'll, you know, they'll provide a, um, a complete um, uh, coverage of resources for doing what we want to do. Yeah. So, so that that's really it, aside from the things that were on the agenda that I've been spending most of my time on. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Did we lose Bob? I think we lost Bob, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's um, <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, happily, <laughs> we're, we're, we're close to the end of the agenda. <laughs> that's uh, good. <laughs> what, uh, what else? Um, what I have, what I have, is just um, concerns of uh, concerns of the board, mail announcements, and the next meeting being on a Tuesday. So, if there are concerns, I think that's a good thing to go over. We're concerned that we lost our chair. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. In the back. Would assume. Okay, yeah, what should we say sure we elected him to do? That's, uh oh. <laughs> That's him. The computer just died. I don't know why. They'll do oh that. Oh boy. I think it's plugged in. That's hard to know. It just suddenly shut off. Anyway. Well, we're, we're seeing if anyone has any uh, concerns or comments or anything for next week's agenda now. Concerned about my computer, but no, that's not what you want. Good. No. Great. No. Uh, no mail. No announcements that I have. So meeting next Tuesday. The, the only announcement is that um, Mary Wigmore is going to be publishing uh, uh, walk dates. She's going to be leading guided walks through the town forest. Um, for anybody that's interested. So I told her I was interested because I've walked all over there and can't find the exact overlook spot that she's talking about. How is she going to publish them? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. She talked about Conway Currents, but... Um, um, I don't think it made it in time. I've yeah, may, she might be sending an email to us for, to put just to put on the website. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be good. But, so that's it. Okay. Got nothing. So we'll adjourn the meeting. All in favor of adjourning? Yes. Aye. So, well, I'll second it. We all say aye. Till Tuesday, 30. Six o'clock. Tuesday. Tuesday, January 9th. Yeah, January 19th, next Tuesday. All right. Bye, Thank everyone. you very much. Thank you all. Bye, Eric. Thank Bye, you Bye, all. Bye, Tom. Bye.